So on to another uh, tricky technical question for you that I've, uh, that I'm really curious about is um, is NP hard problems? So yes, uh, kind of definitionally tricky. <laughs> so <laughs> tell us what NP hard problems are for those of us who don't know what they are mm -hmm. and why we shouldn't just ignore them. And then critically, why things that people wouldn't have even tried NP hard problems mm -hmm. that people wouldn't have even tried five years ago can now be solved in seconds with mathematical yeah. optimization. So my, my quick little um, rundown of computational complexity is, you know, you may have heard uh, something like, is, is P equal to NP? You know, that type of argument. Um, and so essentially what th that's talking about is the algorithms to solve problems. What is their computational complexity? So if something is in class P, that means that there is a polynomial time uh, algorithm that will give you, give you the solution. Um, and those are nice. Those are, are easy to, you know, th they run quickly and everything's pretty good with, you know, that's where you'd like to be. Um, then NP is what we call non-deterministic polynomial. And essentially there's no polynomial time algorithm known to solve it. But if you're given a solution, you can quickly verify that it's correct. So to actually solve the problem, very difficult, but to verify can be easy. Um, there is then after that is what we call um, NP complete, which is the, the most difficult of the, the NP problems. So if you are able to come up with a, a solution or an algorithm that solves one of these quickly, then you can solve all the other ones in the whole class very quickly. So it's sort of like the domino that, that would make everything would make life easy for everybody um, in this in in uh in, in the computational space. Um, but that's, you know, probably not going to happen. Um, but then there's NP hard, which is kind of the same thing, but unlike the NP complete, it doesn't have to, it, you don't necessarily be able to have to verify a solution quickly. So it may be actually very difficult to verify um, if something is, is this, you're asking it sort of, is this solution the optimal solution? That may be hard to, to, to just find out you know, um, on its own. So, so that's where actually mixed integer programming is, is that NP hard. So, you know, you hear about this thing, oh, these problems are so difficult to solve. And yes, they are. Um, uh, but the, the sort of the, the thought is if it's in this category, don't even try to solve it with an exact solution, which is something that, again, like I say, it's just what Gurobi provides and what mixed integer programming, um, the solvers like, like us, what we provide is that global exact solution. Um, we need to use heuristics. We need to use approximations. You know, just be and so it's just sort of like a scary word or a scary phrase or something, and it just like turns people away from it. And like, okay, I'm not even going to try. I'm not even going to attempt. Um, and and I came across this with uh, I was doing a webinar um, and I was talking about um, uh, we we have a, a set of of uh, uh, essentially a, a Python package called Groby Optimods, which is sort of prepackaged optimization problems where you just feed some data, it runs, you don't have to worry about any modeling and it gives you an optimal solution. So it's sort of like very cookie cutter problems. And one of those is what we call a maximum weighted independent set. And I won't worry about going into that. You can watch the webinar on YouTube and, and find out for that yourself. Um, but um, I was looking at the documentation for uh, a Python package that that solves it, th that claims to solve this problem. And there's like a line in there that just says, the actual problem, this is, is known to be NP hard. So, you know, you just, you're just immediately better off using approximations, using, you know, whatever, using some heuristic to find the solution. It just like immediately put its hands up and, uh, and said, you know, and this was documentation saying that, and you know, it was documentation for the, you know, for the package itself. So I guess sure, it's not going to say, hey, use other stuff, but you know, whatever. <laughs> um, uh, and in that webinar, I sort of just like gave it a very small problem of like it's like trying to like taking nodes in a network and finding you know um, uh, a subset that that um, I think that covers um, all the arcs. Or, uh, um, it's I'm blanking on it now, but again, just watch the webinar. Um, but it gave a, it was trying to solve this very simple version of it, and 
it was just like a 10 node problem and it was giving wrong answers. Like looking at the graph, I could visually see that it was wrong. Um, and it was giving suboptimal answers. So, so be, how could you, how would you think about how this would perform? Like sort of at any type of scale, hundreds, thousands of nodes, like you're trying to do some social network analysis and you're getting, you're running this package and it's just giving you clearly suboptimal solutions. Um, so, so is, there is like sort of this, just like NP hard fatigue and, and that sort of, and then that sort of translates into mixed programming of it's a very hard problem. You don't even, don't try solving it with like a solver like Roby because it's just so complex. It's, it's just never going to work. But that was the case like five, 10 years ago. And again, all the stuff that we were talking about before with our algorithmic improvements, hardware improvements, it's just the things that were just like, that's just not even worry about it. You know, oh, we have a, a, a mixed integer programming problem with 10,000 variables and people are scared of that and thinking that's impossible to solve. You never solve that in any type of time that would make sense. Those are being solved in half a second, a second, you know, instantaneously um, nowadays. So it's just, you know, yes, that is true. If I kept, you know, the, the whole thing behind you know, this computational complexity is um, if you expand the, the set of inputs, it you know you're you're growing exponentially. Yes, eventually you can keep you can grow the problem such that it'll take Groby forever to solve something. That is true, you know, at a certain size. But again, now we're getting to the point with all the hardware, the software, and everything where real problems are now manageable. Real problems are now solvable in in real time for some things. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah, you may have to concede a little bit of that, that realism to get a little bit of performance um, or something like that, but that's trade-offs you make for everything. You'd make that with machine learning training, you know, uh, um, you know, I want to be able to retrain models quickly. So you'd make some sacrifices there. Um, th things of that nature. The, so there's always that balance for everything, but, um, but with mathematical optimization, yeah, it's, it, th th it there is this, just that stigma and, and uh, yeah, we're we're part of our message is hey, try us again. Um, then you, you may be pleasantly surprised. Um, and well, I, what I will add to that is is there is a difference between uh, you know I think I may have talked about this last time between a commercial solver, yes, Groby. Eventually, you do have to pay and 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 buy a license from us um, if you want to use what we have at the right scale and everything. Yep. That is true, um, but we have the best minds in optimization building that for you. So, so yeah, we, we gotta. They're not doing it for free yet. Um, I ask, they say no. Um, <laughs> but you can use open source solvers, and I think that's a great way to 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 try and solve real problems at a smaller scale and get get yourself going and try and understand. Hey, does this have business value for me? Does this is this going to be helpful? Yeah, you may have to condense things, but it's a good way to learn, good way to get started. And then by the time you would need something like like Garobi, um, your your problems probably have expanded to a point in which um, it is worthwhile to save that you know uh, you know to have something that takes us open source solver maybe days or weeks to run. And we've had that sort of happen where a, a, a now customer or someone who's trying to evaluate us would say, yeah, this with an open source solver would literally take like a week to run. We just click go on it and just came back when it's done. A week later, it would be there. Now it's solving, you know, in 10 minutes, 20 minutes or something like that. Um, something that used to take a day or it would take a day with open source now takes, you know, 20 seconds, 10 seconds to solve with, 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 uh, with a commercial solver like us. So, so there's, so, it, so part of that is yes, the problem itself is, um, NP hard. It's very difficult. So if you were to attack it with something that is, uh, an open source solver, keep that in mind that there are options, um, past that. And, but I don't want to discourage the use of open source because it is the perfect way um, a great way to to really, if you want to learn, um, uh, uh, it's a great way to to use um, something that's free to to understand the the value to your business. Um, right now, something like Garobi, 
um, you can download, you, if you like pip install Garobi, um, you can use a 2000 by 2000 sort of trial license to get yourself understanding, again, that type of, when I, when I say 2000 by 2000, it sort of just comes out naturally to me because I know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, 2000 decision variables, 2000 constraints. Um, uh, so, um, so when you think about, you know, the, the number of burrito trucks that you're putting out there and the number of constraints that you're adding to that, yeah, it's a fairly small problem, but, but it's, it's really good, a really great way to help you learn and understand, um, and, and sort of just build a small scale thing that says that that's somewhat representative of your problem. And then if you need to expand, then, then, uh, then hit us up again and, and we'd be glad to, to give you free evaluations and, and, and help you work through that as well. Um, so, uh, so there's a couple of things there that I wanted to, to mention about, like, if you try optimization and it fails, um, not to, to, to think about why it might be failing. And if you are using an open source solver, many of them are really good. Some of them could be good for your problem and you may never need anything like Garobi. That's certainly possible. But once you get at scale, um, there's a decent chance that, that, you, that you may need something like us. Nicely said. And that all made perfect sense to me. The open source you know, trade-offs versus using a commercial solution like Garobi, particularly yeah. when you get to at scale. But the way that you got into this was we started by talking about NP hard problems. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, I do deviate. <laughs> and um, so just, I wanted to say that, because I don't think you mentioned this, that um, the NP in NP hard stands for non-deterministic polynomial time problem. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of another way of saying a very complex problem yeah. uh, because there isn't like, you know, a deterministic for sure. You know, you're not going to be able to follow the same path to get the exact same answer every time. Mm -hmm. um, polynomial, meaning things like having quadratic relationships, not just uh, linear relationships in there. Um, and so I don't know if you happen to have off the top of your head, Jerry, like real world NP hard problems that you know, maybe a few years ago, no one would have dared to try to tackle, but mm -hmm. now you can tackle uh, potentially in seconds with Garobi. It's it's a little bit difficult to say like one type of problem because all of MIPS, mixed engine learning programs, they're all kind of similar in a sense, um, right. whether you're using them in supply chain, whether you're using them in, in um, finance, whether you're using it's scheduling, they all sort of translate to the same thing at some point. You take your decision, you take the, the verbal problem, again, you algebra, put in algebra. Once you get in that algebra, algebraic form, they're very similar in, in what you would see sort of written down pen and paper. Um, so it's kind of hard to distinguish that, but one type of problem that, or, or but at the same time, uh, operations research folks, they love to talk about sort of um, problem archetypes. So very common things like the knapsack problem is how much stuff can I fit in a knapsack to maximize its utility before I go on a hike? Something like that. Um, another one is the traveling salesman problem. And this is something that you see a lot of, you know, if you, you, you might see some, um, some neural networks trying to tackle this problem. You might see quantum optimization trying to tackle this problem. And obviously mathematical optimization, <laughs> what, what Groby, trying to tackle this problem. It's, it's just a very common, um, easy to understand problem and traveling salesman problem. If you're not familiar is you have a set of cities that you want to visit. The salesman wants to go um, and sell stuff to each of these cities. What is the shortest path that I can cover all of those and then get back to my starting place? Um, what's the shortest path that I can take? Uh, a, a common thing is I want to travel. I want to travel to all 50 or say all 48 um, uh, state capitals. What's the shortest path that I can take? You know, you don't want to drive from New York to California to Florida back to Washington. That's obviously not great. You want to you want to find the, the the shortest path to travel all those things. So that may be sort of like the problem that people sort of go to as like this is an MP hard problem. And and um, uh, it's and, and it's sort of like the go to like this one's very difficult. Um, because it is, it is difficult to solve. Um, but uh, I think now this is where I might have to have to come back and, and do some, some, uh, some research and stuff like that. But, you know, uh, you, you can solve problems that you know, the, the key metric, I guess, or the key sort of like quantifier of a traveling salesman problem is the number of cities. And there would be like, if you want to travel, if you want to do like a 50 city problem, like, 
um, even, you know, five years ago, 10 years ago, that's something that would be like, oh man, that's, that's kind of difficult to solve. Now we're into thousands and, you know, stuff like that, where it's easily to solve. You can easily solve a traveling salesman problem with, with that type of, 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 uh, sort of size, um, relatively, you know, relatively quickly, or at least, you know, quickly enough for, uh, that makes sense for whatever real application that you're, that you're trying to solve. So, um, that's nice. the sort of like the go-to thing that people like to talk about. 